<laughs> the APRT though. And I just jumped out the port with dirty girl bastard. Long little poo. Whoop. Oh, we willing to quit. We ain't dodging no rain. You know what I bang, bitch. Get my neck. Stressing the game. Bump out stress. All of my. So we got NPR Tito off the courts with us today. What's going on? What the fuck, Riley? How you feeling today, bro? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. good. Yeah. Appreciate you coming by, man. We've been talking about this for a minute, then pandemic came, yeah. slowed us up. We were supposed to have been putting it together. That yeah. was a long time coming. For sure, man. But you're here now, man. For sure. Yeah. So let's take it back, man. Um, so you were originally born in Decatur. Yeah. I'm originally born in Decatur, and I got like... I got like 12, 13. I went to County Road with my sister. But I was originally born for like East Lake Meadow, OP, 2nd Avenue, down Decatur. Yeah. What was your first thoughts of Candler, man? Yeah, Candler, that was showed me. Candler taught me a lot because I was young. You know what I mean? I was young and it's a lot going on on County Road. So, yeah, I had to keep up real fast. You know, it's a very fast, you know what I'm saying, pacey area so when i was young i hurry up and adapted to it and made the best out of it yeah what's going on in canada these days um <laughs> what's going on in canada these days man it's just a whole bunch of little active you know what i mean fun things going on i still you know what i'm saying stay in contact with my family friends and loved ones out there i'd be so busy i'd be doing stuff but you know uh for the most part, where I be going to a cattle road, everybody's still there. Everybody, you know what I mean? Just be greeting me, be wanting me to just keep on striving and going. I don't go all the way down County Road, you know what I'm saying? I be stopping right there with that bridge at, right? Like, you know what I mean? Well, uh, you know, with the Valero and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't go all the way down that way. I be like side of Cal Mall and, okay. you know what I'm saying? Amber Drive and stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So how old were you when you first jumped off the porch? What? I jumped out that motherfucker as soon as these feet got down, get the jumping, you know what I'm saying? I jumped out that motherfucker as soon as I could, 20 out. I can't even remember it was so far young. You know, I was young. So it's not like even, you know, set time because as soon as I could explore and get out there, I was gone, you know what I mean? So that was early teens. Do you have any uh, family members out there to kind of guide you or? Uh, nah, I really, you know, I guided myself in a way, you know what I mean? My dad was gone, you know, mom and dude always had to work to keep a roof over a nigga head, so. Um, I ain't never had that to like to just guide me. I learned everything on myself, mistakes, what to do and don't do, watching somebody else do something. I learned that way real fast, but I ain't had nobody just, you know what I mean? But I had my uncle fat. You know what I mean? Once I got of age to listen to people, because, you know, when you young, you don't listen to nobody. So when I got to, you know, an age that I did listen to at least one person, <coughs> it would be my Uncle Fat and my Uncle Wack them. Yeah. Yeah, that's who I was listening to. What were some <laughs> of the best advice they gave you? <coughs> what? Get that money. <laughs> they, they the ones who taught me how to get that money. Because, you know, growing up in the hood, it always, you know what I mean? Money is a, is a problem. You know what I'm saying? That is the problem, so. Um, he basically was telling me different tools in life to use to, to get money, you know what I'm saying, to feed your family and better yourself, you know what I mean? So he always taught me to strive, and you know what I'm saying? And one thing he always told me, that don't trust nobody, you know what I'm saying? He always told me, don't trust nobody, these niggas ain't right, yeah. you know what I mean? So I always had that mentality in my head, that's probably why I survived so long. Cause ain't nobody there, right? And I just always never really too tough trusted people. <coughs> Real shit. For sure. So when did you first start getting into some bankroll? How old were you? Huh? How old were you when you first started getting some money? What? Since the beginning of time. I think I was, <laughs> what? I think, at first I think I was doing right though. I ain't gonna lie. I think I was knocking on people though, taking out trash for, for some little money. You know what I'm saying? I was doing right. But then, you know, you be wanting to get that, you be wanting to get some real money. So I was just trying to find any other way. You know, you're young, you don't care if it's right or wrong. You're just trying to get some money. So, you know what I mean? I was, I was like one of the little kids in the hood. I always had a little bank roll, a little young man. I ain't going to lie. I, I always had money. So even at, you know, three, I probably walk up to you, but let me get a dollar. You know what I'm saying? So money was always a friend of mine. We always was close like that. Yeah. 
Um, talk to us about catching the traffic in charge, and you were facing ten years. Yeah, that deep right there, but that was a, that was a stage in life I learned. That was another lesson learned in life. You know what I mean? I uh, I also taught me that people, you know what I'm saying, would turn your back because you know I only had people like my brother Blow. It was people that were real close to me that ain't even helped me when I was in that situation. You know what I'm saying? I was in a stand on my own 20 and I came out, did my time. You know what I mean? Um, I can't really remember. I know I got pulled over. It was late night. I was, got pulled over. My baby mom was driving. I'm geeked up on the drink. I was already on the run anyway, though. So, you know what I mean? But they caught me with some. And then uh, it was my first time going to prison. It was my first time. And um, I learned a lot though, cause I read, I ain't, I ain't waste my time in there. You know what I mean? I got smarter, stronger and better. So when I came out, you know what I mean? I was able to be up one already when I got out. You know what I mean? How much time did you do that time? Um, at first them motherfuckers were talking brazy. They were talking about straight Ted or some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And then, what it will we? And they started going down. I sat in that motherfucker. I sat in Wright Street for about a year and a half. Damn. I stayed down. You know what I'm saying? I ain't cry like it. I ain't, I ain't, I knew what I was waiting on. I was trying to just get a good number. And I think they, it was like, they said, do, you know what I'm saying? 10 do three. But I was already a year and a half already. And so when I went to prison, I did about another year and a half or something. You know? And I learned from that mistake. You know what I mean? It came out and, you know what I'm saying? Did better been up ever since. So Yeah. Oh. Right. So what would you say is one of the biggest life lessons you learned while being out in the streets? Um uh, biggest life lesson is just watch out for the cross. You know what I mean? The uh being out here from when I was young, it's different from now. You know, it's twenty twenty now, you know, going in twenty twenty one. So it's really different, you know what I mean, from the rules and regulations from back then. So I, you got to adapt with every year, whatever month, adapt with the streets, you know what I mean? And I just learned to just stick to yourself and stay with your your, your day ones, your game. That's why I, I don't I don't associate with nobody. I don't fuck with nobody. I don't fuck with nobody but my game. I don't even too tough do features with nobody, you know what I'm saying? Unless I know you, know you. It ain't even about the money at that point. I just got to know you, know you, and if I fuck with your vibe, I ended up, you know what I'm saying? If I ever heard me on somebody's song or they on my song, we vibed out and we kicked it and we was like decided, you know what I mean, to get on the song. Yeah. So how'd you get into rapping? I know you didn't want to be a rapper at first. <laughs> yeah, man. My boy Pooh, Pooh pushed me. You know what I'm saying? Long little Pooh. Uh, Blogo. You know what I'm saying? My brother Blow, he got a big influence on it. I ain't gonna cap. Um, my brother Wee, he always pushed me because I always, I, in the beginning, I'd be like, man, fuck this shit. Man. He'd be like, no, nah, don't give up, bro. Just, you know what I'm saying? This is a way they're gonna help the family get us up, make a way for us. I'd be like, all right, man. But damn, at the same time, man, these niggas some hoes, man. This shit some pussy shit. But then I thought about it, it'd be your fans and people who hit you up and be like, yeah, but I listen to your shit every day. This how I make a, you know what I'm saying? So I'd be, that would make me keep going, keep grinding, keep dropping. Yeah. Did it come natural to you when you first started? Yeah. To be honest, I ain't going to lie. Everything I ever did, I was, you know, good at it. You know what I'm saying? And if I concentrate and care about it, I'm fired. You know what I'm saying? So I never just, you know what I'm saying? So once I did it, I, I had to, like, catch the ropes of it. But I learned real fast because I was with my brother, bro. You know, we was on tours and we was doing stuff. So I learned and seen so much so fast. <laughs> I took it in, so <clears throat> so that helped me out a lot too. You know what I mean? Just to be able to just sit back. I'm the type to just sit back anyway. So I sat back and observed a lot. You know what I'm saying with my brother Chris. So <clears throat> that would help me and gave me the little, you know what I mean, the jump start to know what's right, what's wrong in, in the industry. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like being on the road? Lit, <laughs> lit. I think we ran for the police in every state. I ain't gonna lie, but that motherfucker, that tour was hard. I ain't gonna lie, man. I ain't, we had so much fun. It was so many memories, you know what I mean? And um, I learned so much. I had to perform every time, you know what I mean? I was getting better and better at performing, knowing how to do certain things. But as an overall assumption, lit. That was the best time of my life. I was out the hood, you know what I mean? Man, you, you been from the hood, been from county. I know some people who ain't even made it past that yet, you know what I mean? They, 
they old and everything, never seen nothing, never been there. So the fact that I was seeing different states and different women and different cultures, it was hard. I liked it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you say you fully focus on music right now? Uh, yeah, for sure. I could say I'm fully focusing on, you know what I'm saying, putting out the music for my fans and dropping them with their gang shit. And, and I'm, you know what I'm saying, I've been in the studio a lot. I got a lot of new music for everybody. So, you know what I mean? I'm excited and I can't wait, you know what I mean, to just start dropping some more music. Yeah. What's the next project you dropping? I see this hashtag War God. Is that going to be the project? Oh, yeah. War God. War God, man, this is like another me, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I mean? He be, that's my stepper partner, you know what I'm saying? He be stepping with me. But um, I end up putting that hashtag so much, everybody now said, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so War God ended up becoming bigger than what I expected War God to be, you know what I'm saying? I was just a week straight mad talking about War God, War God. Then now it don't ran on. So now it's something big. So, well, God could in the future become a project. It is a song. I did a song called Well, God. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That I will be dropping. And um, I think that's on NPR with the B. And I got uh, NPR Spartans dropping with the game. Hmm. So I got about two or three projects finna be dropping within this month and next month. Oh, really? Yeah. What's the first one you plan to drop? Um. Mm. I don't know. It's really up to the label. I'm ready to drop. I'm really like my brother. Like I told him, I'm ready to drop everything, anything. I'm so loaded. You know what I mean? NPR with the B, I want that to drop because that's, you know what I'm saying, all my artists and everybody that's in my game, I want that to drop like this month. It was supposed to be on the 27th, you know what I'm saying? But I think it got pushed back. But uh, NPR Spartans, uh, that's going to be the the next project, you know, with my brother Pablo. So I'm excited about that one, you know what I mean? Cause that one was really hard. I just heard that playlist and that's gonna be, a, that's gonna be the one the streets gonna love. <laughs> yeah, streets waiting for that one. For sure. Yeah. Who are some of the producers you've been working with lately? I've been working with a lot of, um, I've been working with a lot of people who've been hearing my um, email, but I still got, you know, people that I always deal with, like, you know, Chant, Spiffy. Um, I've been dealing with a lot of producers now. I've been liking from Texas and Memphis. I've been liking that style, you know what I mean? So I've been trying different different things, but I don't got a lot of work done, like D Sims, you okay. know what I'm saying, Zan. Um there's so many of them, man. I don't did so much, man. I got so many hard things coming out. But yeah, I did with most of the producers in the A. I don't need a lot on, but I'm going to be dropping soon. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to us about your growth as an artist from when you first started to today. Um, yeah, I could say I got better. And everybody said that. They say the more you sit in there, you know, it's repetition. You know, the more you, you keep doing something, the better you're going to perfect the craft. So, you know, I can't say that my music now is way more harder. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like it. You know what I mean? I got to a nice little rhythm, you know what I mean? And I like the fact I don't just sound like nobody. So, like, I like what I became. I don't grow away for, from my first, you know what I mean, take, Rich Blood. Yeah, I don't develop way more since then. That's like three projects back. So I feel like, yeah, my way that I got now is way harder than back then. Yeah. What's the next video you plan to drop? Um, War God. Okay. War God. I was actually uh, finna shoot War God, and uh, I'm gonna do one with my brother, uh, Rats in the Say. Hmm. So I got them two videos that are gonna be dropping. Of uh, both of the projects that's coming out, I'm gonna shoot a video of both of them just to get it started. Yeah. yeah. What's your thoughts on the rap game right now? Man, you don't want my thoughts on that game. It's some bullshit. Niggas, oh, I don't. I be just knowing that for a fact that hard work, you know what I'm saying, will will feed my family. So I'm really doing this to better my my family and my community. You know, nothing more, nothing less. You know what I mean. So I'm not too big on thinking about everybody else and anything else. But I just say in all, I'm not even a people person to even mm -hmm. to even you know what I mean care about them or anything. But I just be I be feeling like the why I'm doing it because now. It, I became passionate and now I really 
like it and I feel like it can help my family. So I'm gonna grind hard and you know what I'm saying, get us where we gotta go. Yeah. But you know, the rag game, you know what I mean? It's different levels to it, you know what I mean? So I, you know, you got big dogs and you got little dogs. So I just be studying everybody and just seeing which way, you know what I'm saying, that, that things be going when the decisions people be making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I be seeing that and I just be learning from that. You know what I mean? What do your fans mean to you? Everything. <laughs> My fans are the reason, reason I rap, I'm telling you. They, they didn't want to be putting me down. They didn't want to put me down by war guard. Why you need to shoot? Why you need it? <laughs> so that would be making me do that. That's why I'm telling you, my fans be making me do what I be doing. If I drop songs, they put me down. If they wanted, like, if I ever thought about a song or a video, I be going off of what they be saying, you know what I mean? And what I be hearing. Yeah. So yeah, my fans is everything. I fuck with them, they gang. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you touched it on earlier, but what was your relationship like with uh, Lil Pooh? With who? With Pooh. Oh, with Pooh, Pooh, my brother. Pooh, my real life brother. Like I said, that's how I even found out about Dirty Glove Bassett. And I was in apartments. I was in apartments and he was always hearing my phone up on, on IG, but I don't be on social media like that. So um, somehow, some way he got through to me. And he was like, man, I'll pull up on you if you think, you know what I'm saying? So he pulled up on me, he kicked it with me. We smoking. He like, yeah, Tito, man, I'm telling you, you go hard, man. You need to go and do this and do that. So I started building a relationship with him at first off business, and it just started becoming as a family. Like, we were just hitting each other up daily, checking on each other, and you know what I mean, just seeing what each other was doing, we'd hit each other up. So he ended, he ended up becoming family, but he met up with me because of music. Like, he found me and was like, he liked my music. So that what made me like him. I was like, damn, okay, you you came to the apartment just to tell my music hard. You know what I mean? So that's what it started off as. He just became family. He ended up coming my Empire Spirit and everything. Yeah, that was before you were even taking this serious, huh? Yeah, that ain't, that's when I wasn't even nowhere near thinking about it. Uh, I wasn't even thinking about it. I just was doing a few little songs because I was in the studio and I'm gang. Yeah. Pooh talking about it's hard, hard. You need to do this and do that and do that and do this. So I started. I started listening to him, you know what I mean? And that's when we started connecting. How will you always remember him? Well, how I will remember him as being cool, being funny, and being real. You know what I'm saying? I always remember him like that. That smile, he gonna laugh, so he gonna smile, so he see, you know what I'm saying? And that my boy, he always was real, you know what I mean? So I'm always remember him for that, you know what I mean? I think about him all the time, that my dog, you know what I mean? Long live Pooh, man. Long live Pooh. What are you talking about? All right. Anything else you're working on right now, Tito? Uh, I mean, other than NPR with the B and um, NPR Spartans, man, it's just a whole bunch of NPR shit, man. I'm just <laughs> dropping just to put everybody down. That's all I'm doing. That one thing I do like about music, I get to put these fuck nigga down. So I get to say how I feel and I get to, you know what I mean? So that's the good thing about it. So I'm going to just... It's a lot of music coming soon. I ain't even, I'm, I'm putting you down. There's gonna be stuff going on almost every month. Yeah. Any shout outs before we wrap it up? Uh, for sure, for sure. Shout out to my gang, nigga, and fuck everybody else. You know what I mean? Shout out to the Money Power Respect, everybody that is Money Power Respect. You know what I mean? And everybody who, and shout out to everybody who fuck with me. And my haters, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we're willing to quit, we ain't dodging no rain. You know what I bang, bitch, look at my neck. Stressing the game, bump out stress. All of my diamonds, they BBS way. I'm ready for war. I'm